All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of our State of Decay 2 new player guide. So this should be uh, the last episode in this series. Uh, we, last episode we went ahead, we cleared out all the play cards, and then we started the end game process for State of Decay 2, which is the Legacies. Um, now, the Legacies have always been like a confusing part of the game for a lot of new players, especially because the way State of Decay like, plays and then the way it ends is kind of weird for like a survival game like this a lot of these are type of survival games um either a they just go on forever and they just never end and you just keep playing and keep playing indefinitely until you just get bored um but this game actually has like a definitive end and you could play it forever and ever and ever like and just keep going and moving maps and stuff like that now there is no right or wrong answer like how you want like for instance i have what they uh i consider a forever community which is a group that i just maintain i collect weapons on them i travel around the maps and i just build them up build them up build them up and just have the best survivors the best guns the best everything and i never finish that community so if that's your goal you do not want to do what i'm doing here um and like actually i mean you can um but you want to uh, when we get to the end i'll, I'll show you what you don't want to do if you do want to maintain that uh that that playthrough um but at the same time you have to be careful because i've ended uh there's a, like yeah we'll just we'll just look at it it'll be better to show you guys than uh try to explain it so I'm sitting there, I'm trying, like, how can I explain this? It'll just be better for you guys to see it. Cause I don't, this is one of those things I don't want you guys to mess up because you could delete your community. And um, yeah, that would just want to be good. So instead of me trying to explain it right now, it's just going to confuse a bunch of you guys. So we'll just wait to the end and I'll actually show you guys that part. But then you can also beat the game, get your legacy boons. If your goal is to move on to harder difficulties and stuff like that, every time you beat the game with a certain leader type, um you get a boon that's what it's called the legacy boon and that gives you like benefits for for your community when you start a new one um you choose that legacy boon there's four different ones sheriff builder uh warlord and uh trader and each one has its own benefits so your goal should be to unlock all those boons for uh the difficulty or you know the, the one thing you have to remember though if you unlock a boon and then you increase your difficulty that boon is no longer valid it's only valid on the difficulty that you unlocked it in or below so say i i unlocked uh right now we're playing on standard zone if i beat this warlord boon or the warlord uh ending i'm going to get the warlord boon and it's going to be good for standard zone and anything under that so green zone um, but it's not going to be good for Dread Nightmare Lethal. Now, if you want to go and unlock, the best way to do it is the highest difficulty possible because then it will unlock it for all the ones below it. Um, but obviously, if you're newer to the game, that's not really going to be much of an option. But let's not waste any more time. Uh, last episode, I started the Warlord Legacy. That's the one that we're working on now. It's actually one of the harder ones if you're playing on a higher difficulty because you have to engage with uh, human enemies, which can be quite dangerous. Um down on the standard zone though it's it's really not all that bad it's it's not too bad okay so the one thing is we have to actually wait um Someone just stopped by the base with never mind for us. there come by and listen. there it is so the informant just showed up so this uh survivor is a part of the uh the end game mission set now uh like i explained to you guys last episode there is four different types of missions you can do at the end game you have your lead uh, and it all just depends on the leader that you have so you have your sheriff uh builder trader and warlord um there is easier ones um you know builder focuses on um building your base up recruiting a bunch of people and then defending your base against a giant siege uh at the end it's like a four or five minute siege and then um, Trader is all about going around, uh, getting together with a bunch of enclaves, uh, building like a trade network. And then you go and have this huge trade summit at the end of the game that gets raided by raiders and um, infected. And it's a, it's a big siege uh, that you got to defend, but not at your base. That's at a different location. Um, Sheriff is all about fighting off uh, a group of bandits who are trying to move into town. So that's another one that you have to fight a bunch of human enemies. That one's actually worse 
than the um, the Warlord one that we're doing because when you go to the end game building, there's like five or six hostels in that building. It's actually it's pretty cool. Um, and you have to also fight a bunch of hostels throughout that one. So that one and Warlord are more human focused. And uh, Trader and Builder are uh, builders 100% zombie foot. Well, I guess they're both a little bit of each because you do fight off some people who try to raid your base in the Builder one. So just to give you guys a little uh, insight on what the missions look like or what the endings could look like. But we're doing Warlord. So uh, something personal has come up that I should focus on. All right. So obviously My we got worked as a cop in this town, but I haven't seen him since the outbreak. We could definitely use more people with tactical training. See what you can find. All right, so we're going to go ahead and swap over to uh, the leader because in order to do these end game leader missions, you actually have to play as said leader. So uh, we're just going to give her a base defense weapon. Oops, switch, it will initiate their warlord, the informant mission. No way this can last. So best enjoy it while it does. <laughs> Sounds so, so happy. So we'll go ahead. We'll grab this uh, MP5 A2. Now I'm I'm doing that only because I know that even fighting the human enemies uh, is a little bit of a pain in the butt on these lower difficulties. It it, it shouldn't really matter all that much because I can kill everybody with a single headshot. Uh, even with 9mm. Now, in the higher difficulties, you're going to want to use um, guns with a little bit more stop and power, 45, uh, 762, all the rifle calibers. Those would be pretty useful. Just getting all my gear set up here. All right, looks good. So let's talk to this informant. See what she has to say. All right, try and follow me here. Uh, you're in serious danger. If you give me a place to stay, I'll tell you everything. Um, let's see what she is. Yeah, she's got no n nothing bad about her. We'll, we'll recruit her. Uh, how many people are we at right now? Seven. So she'll be at We've eighth. We've got a problem over here. Can you folks help us out? To the beginning of a beautiful friendship. All right, so let's talk to her and find out what she knows. Now, you don't have to. You can, like, threaten her or whatever, and she'll, like, tell you the information anyways. But if you need another survivor, hey, just grab her. Uh, it's such a relief. Thanks. My old enclave is working with the group that calls themselves the Coalition, or calls itself the Coalition. Uh, they wanted us to set you up. I slipped away to warn you. Um, we'll let them set their trap. But we'll be ready for them. Uh, good. Show me where they are. We'll hit them first. So this all just depends on how you want to do it. I'm going to hit them first. Uh, why not? Now, one thing you need to be careful with is if you your your leader dies, you're going to lose your progress on on the end game, and you have to go. You got to promote somebody again, and then and then pick it up. So I've had it to where sheriff was the worst back back in the day. Um, uh, the the way the ladder used to be set up when you would climb up the building, the bad guy would be standing at the top. You'd climb up and he would just shoot you, and some sometimes you'd just die outright. And it was it was pretty rough. I've seen a lot of people, including myself, that have been killed right at that last moment on that mission, and you just you got to restart. So be careful uh, and try not to die during this end game process, because yeah, you you will have to restart the uh, mission. Have to re-promote somebody and everything. All right, so we'll go ahead and I'll attack them first. Idea. After you. You know, it's getting kind of crowded. Around here. Okay, so they're right up here at the top of the hill. Uh, like I said, I, you know, I showed you guys. I believe the bloater gas is pretty. That juggernaut won't be easy to bring down. Pretty effective against the human enemies. Mm, card we want to take. Grab the regular pick. Uh, you know, I'll bring the SUV. Screw it. You know, you know, it's a good apocalypse, guys. When you have uh, 
a damn used car lot outside and get to pick and choose what you want to drive. Got more cars in the apocalypse than I've owned in my whole life put together. Kids in second grade made fun of me for not having a dad on Father's Day, but I actually didn't mind. Mom would always take me for pancakes every time that holiday rolled around. Sure beat having to make a card. Yeah. Okay, so approaching an enemy enclave. Oh, that's interesting. They're out here in the open. So I realistically, you should never do what I just did there, um, especially with the enemies being all around you because they'll start shooting at you. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why they're even here. It must have just like loaded in or something, but splash them dudes real quick. Well, I was going to say, when you're approaching an enemy enclave building, you want to make sure that you park. Operation at Crow Lake proves one thing for sure. They are working with the government and hiding to safeguard those deemed worthy of rescue. America's a sinking ship. And Red Talon's the only one with a life raft. You want to make sure you approach and get out of your vehicle. I believe I showed you in one of the earlier episodes to where you have cover because a lot of the times they'll just start shooting at you immediately. Um... But that worked out quite nice. Um, I should not have jumped out the car there, but good thing the one guy didn't have a gun, the other guy was glitched, so. Keep your eyes peeled for hostiles around here. Oh, shit. But there's still two more guys in this building. So, see how I'm getting out here? I got cover. shot him in the face that's what i was trying to tell you guys about the lower difficulties you can kill the enemy super easy Hello? Zombies incoming. check their bodies see if they have any good guns or anything oh great here they come But it's fast search that body, and as you can see, <laughs> you hear all the zombies coming. Okay, so now what's happening here is we have bad guys all over the place. How come I always get stuck with the creepy places? Like there was a lot of them. Worry too much. We had the two here. Plus the ones down here. I wonder if they had something on their bodies I was supposed to get. Or if I broke the mission because I killed them too soon. I believe one of them has a letter or something that you gotta get off their body. It might have been on the guy inside. I gotta rest. I think killing those uh, those guys before the mission started might have might might have messed it up. But we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna check the body, see if there's like a note. Doesn't get any emptier than this. Oh no. All quiet now. Okay, so I think the mission bugged out, and I'm going to show you guys if your missions, any mission, um, 
If you ever have a mission that bugs out like this, what you can do is you just go back to your base. I go back to my base just so I know where I'm going to spawn in and everything. But yeah, the, it looks like the mission bugged out. I got it, guys. One sec. Little, little, little in there. So, uh, yeah, show you guys. <laughs> this is all part of the plan, guys. All part of the guide. You know, I wanted to show you guys how the, the stuck command works. Um, so, yeah, when you're in a spot like this and there's no getting out, um, Got a good teacher here, you know, I'll show you how, how it's done. Uh, yeah, you just come, you open up your radio menu, you come all the way down to the bottom, you hit stuck. Wait a couple seconds. And voila! There it is. I, I wanted to make sure I showed you guys how that was done. Juggernaut. Juggy and a feral over there. Now, we kind of just... This mission breaking... Um, honestly, we, got, we just got a little cheeky because as you guys see, I killed all those guys, looted all their weapons, right? And then what I'm about to do is we're going to come back in the base here. Now you want to reset your game. Okay, so you're going to exit. You're going to go back to the main menu. And what this does is anytime you exit the game while you have a mission active, it completely null and voids that, that mission. Uh, and then you actually have to go back in and, and start it over again. So we just got all the... But you get the, I, all that stuff. I stored it in my locker. So that stuff's stored. Um, but now when I load back in, the mission uh, is going to restart. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so now what we got to do is we just got to wait for it to pop back up. She should be like, hey, blah, 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 blah. Or another person will actually come to my base as an informant. That will be interesting. To see how that that's, this is going to work out. And while we wait, said we're gonna go and uh, it shouldn't take too long, so we shouldn't. We're not really gonna have much time to do anything. Oh, uh, but just in case, we're gonna gear up. Pistols are rough, man. always as soon as i start like leaving to go somewhere the game of the mission will pop like it's oh always always every single time someone just showed up here wanted to chat with yo so we get to recruit a whole nother person chat that's kind of kind of broken all right 
little exploit that we just discovered with the um with the warlord mission you could actually use this to get up to the cap um how it works in state of decay is this there's a there's a community cap on how many survivors you can have the soft cap is nine like you it, the game won't allow you to recruit any more than nine survivors but if there's a mission in the game that forces survivors on to into your community like this um what ends up happening is you can like the builder uh or the builder legacy allows you to recruit three people over and over and over again and then you can get up to 12 survivors so um what i'm thinking is you could just keep doing this over and over and over again and just keep recruiting these people as they show up until you get into 12. <laughs> just recruit all the informants and um what i mean by that is as soon as you recruit this lady well i got i got to swap over to let me make sure this actually works before I... Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so never mind. So uh, I'm already at cap. So it won't allow... It's like, nah, nah, you can't do it. I was going to say, because you'd be able to spam this, but see how I don't have the ability to recruit her? It's just saying, give me a place to stay and I'll tell you everything. Nice try, but we have no room. Tell me what you know, or I'll make you tell me. Okay, let's calm down. I need to take some time for a personal project. My brother worked as a cop in this town, but I haven't seen him since the outbreak. All right, so now we're going to travel with her. We could definitely use more people with tactical training. See what you can find. Okay, let's do it. I'm right behind you. We just threatened her. Now we're going to have her go with us. So you can't you can't use this one as a way to plus up your community like I thought. Uh, they no exploit there, guys. All right, let's grab some fuel. Uh, but you can you can increase your community size with the builder boon. That one actually allows you to get up to twelve. I think they're in the same spot. So this time, e oops, fat finger that. Even this time, That's even though. A lot of Zed's coming our way. Get in the car, lady. We got a hitchhiker. Ah. All right, get in. So dumb. There we go. Just hit it in the car. Now I forgot what I was just talking about. Whatever. We got a problem over here. Could you folks help us out? The heart eaters, guys. The heart eaters. Oh, this time I'm gonna just pull up and not yeah like those two guys there we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with them so activate the mission first same thing I did go, before. Go, go. Yeah, all four of them are here now. Get out on this side. They won't be able to shoot at me. Lady. Oh. Whoa. That was one of them the whole time. I thought that was her.
Nope, nothing in here. Oh, that's actually not a bad big Hank. We got the big Hank. My back is killing me over here. Did the Okay, so I killed them. This is weird, guys. I've never seen this. This is like super bug. Yeah, you just get to this point and it just says take out. Yeah, for some reason, this is bugged. Let me know if you guys have seen this same bug. Uh, there's only one more workaround that I can even try. But yeah, that's quite frustrating. You kill them and then it just pops up and says, Take out the Determined, which is the name of the Enclave. Um, but they're all already dead, laying on the ground. That's frustrating. So instead of hitting them first, I'm going to allow them to set their trap or whatever, uh, the other choice, and see if that changes... Uh, how this goes maybe maybe we can get around this bug like that you folks are okay i don't see myself moving along anytime soon it's either that or the warlord legacy is broken right now but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out right now for you guys wasting all this time see now if i was a real youtuber you know all this stuff would have been edited out and you would have never seen this i would have made it look like Everything was hunky dory when it wasn't. Hey out there. We're running low on materials for building our zombie traps. We need some supplies. You think you can help? I'm not entirely sure. Way too noisy. Alright. So again. Oh, what kind of vehicle is this? That's a destroyed Desperado. Add that to the used car lot. We're just waiting for the informant mission to pop back up. And then, like I said, we're going to try to pick the other choice. I don't know if the choice changes how the mission goes. Uh, I'm hoping it does. These Jeeps upgrade into a pretty nice vehicle. Huge, huge fuel tanks on the back of them. I believe they have some decent storage after the update <clears throat> that uh, we did the storages. Yeah. Yeah, this one has eight. Used to only have six.
All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the other upgrades. Actually, if I have enough resources, um, I could pull this off right now. So I'm not gonna upgrade this one because it has the full size storage. Now this one, as you can see, actually has a short, little, uh, smaller storage. When you upgrade a vehicle, you don't want to keep rucksacks in the trunk. Now, this one, if you click here, click on the upgrade, it tells you this one needs a heavy. All right, to upgrade the SUVs into the smash wagon. Now, I'm going to go into my base. That's a no-go. Go here. And then we're going to craft a heavy kit. I might not have enough circuitry to do the other one, too. I wanted to show you, but we come here, and then we hit upgrade. So this is the smash wagon. This is with the ambulance, any of the SUV, or no, the, no, the ambulance turns into uh, that. Uh, any of the SUV type vehicles will turn into this. Uh, wow, it actually gets the upgraded. Yeah, this also gets an upgraded inventory of 10 slots. That's not my bad, it might, not bad. It's my first time actually upgrading the smash wagon since the new uh, update. Somebody's at base. There it is. Come hear him out. So we got this one here to the, the pickup truck. Uh, this one needs a medium. Not happening. Okay. Go ahead and turn it into the Viking. Now this is the upgraded uh, pickup truck. It's good. I haven't drove one of these in a while either. I don't even know what the... Okay, so this one actually has a eight slot still too, even though it doesn't even have a trunk anymore. It's just all gas. Bloater over there. So those are some of the, the upgraded vehicles. Like I said, the Jeep upgrades into a nice one too. The survey car, I would never, uh, or this one, I wouldn't upgrade. These two here, um, you'll lose your sport kit on this and you'll just, like these two upgrade into the same vehicle. Uh, you never want to upgrade any of the special vehicles like this because you'll lose your survey ability and you'll just gain like this little upgraded car that's not that great. All right, so now that this mission popped up again, we'll switch back to our leader. Mm -hmm. All right, try and follow me here. Dude, All right. Put that thing down before you hurt someone. Okay, so we've been doing this to hit them first. We're going to say we'll let them set their trap, but we'll be ready for them. You better gear up before you get started on this one. So now we're just going to wait for the trap to be sprung. And uh, we're going to see if this turns out any different than uh, the previous. Did wait. this coalition give you any more details on the trap they're planning? They didn't trust me enough to say, but it's definitely going to happen. Probably. Hey, if you folks aren't too busy, could you maybe lend us a hand? I hate to come across as needy, but if you're listening, I could use some help. I'm headed your way now. Hey, thanks. That's the trap I told you about. Be careful. It's a setup. All right. So this is letting them set the trap. We'll head over there in the smash wagon. It, this mission is also in a different location this time, so hopefully it doesn't bug, guys. So I'm going to check the map really quick. So I want to make sure. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be in a house. Oh, there's the military truck we never brought back to base yet.
So they sent me to an infested house. What the hell is that? There's just people everywhere. I don't even know what that, what's going on. Why there's just some crouching person? Must be a part of the trap. I need some help. Oh shit! Come on out if you're here. I'm not convinced. Yo. We're open to a swap if you are. Why not? Waiting there in ambush. For you to go straight to hell. Yep. You definitely want to be careful in this instance because I, I focused in on the zombies there because I didn't know that the uh, humans were going to come. Alright, so the mission went, went good that time, guys. Uh, doing it that way, it doesn't seem to be bugs. So if you run into the same situation I did, where your mission kind of just gets stuck, uh, go ahead and reset it. And then do the other path. Because uh, the other path seems to work. But uh, right there, I actually made a mistake. Because the mission said to defend against the zombies that the Feral Forges have attacked. I killed that one lady, and I thought that was it. Uh, but come to find out, yeah, there was more, more people there, so... Don't focus too hard on the zombie and have those guys jump you. I was able to quickly adjust fire, you know, and, and take them out, but. So let's talk to. Oh, now we can recruit her. She's painting. <laughs> I hate traitors. Prepare to die. <laughs> um, we'll let her go. We'll let her go. Yeah, I wish I cared, but I don't. Later, suckers. Look, I don't. Nah, I wish I would have killed her. We dealt with the threat, but we need to learn more about this coalition before they show up again. Whoops. Okay, so that's another mission down. Loader. Yo, the smash wagon, smash wagon, uh, smash wagon. Wow, is actually quite fast. Just couldn't say that word. All right, so we'll. Yeah, I'll just top off the nine mil swap survivors. I I don't think I don't know if you have to. Uh, I see. I feel like I get a better mission flow when I swap off the leader, um, jump on somebody else. I feel like the missions will pick up and then uh, allows you to, to to actually continue. But I felt like when I stay on the leader, not only do they get tired, uh, but I feel like the mission flow either a the missions never flow or they flow really slow. So.
But yeah, the, the good thing about the smash wagon, like I said, 10 vehicles, or 10 inventory on the back, which is huge. Um, it's, it's pretty fast, it handles well. But as soon as I get down here, it's gonna... Gonna activate. Generally, why I like to stick to the roads, especially in upgraded vehicles, uh, when you start hitting the, the off-road terrain, some of the terrain isn't even, so the vehicles will get hung up. Uh, that's why you'll always watch, see me traversing on the roads for the most part. Unless you have a vehicle that's really high off the ground, like the Jeep. Um, the upgraded Jeep has a nice <clears throat> lift to it. That, see that car right there, guys? That's actually one of the better brogans in the game. That That's another one you don't want to upgrade. Um, the one you want to upgrade is the brogan that has nothing. Um, it will look just like that without the thing on the top. All the other brogans are specialty brogans, so they have a benefit to them. But yeah, if you find one of these cars that looks exactly like this without the thing on the top, as you check it, that thing on the top counts as extra storage. So this has eight storage slots and this tiny little car, and it's good on gas. This place is clear. Yep, that's heavy enough. Got a little revolver. Yeah, this revolver that we just got here. Uh, I'm not a huge revolver user in this game, only because in the higher difficulties, they're very, very bad. Uh, not, they're not bad, they're just not viable, um, because of the noise factor, and revolvers can't be suppressed, so they're just, but this one's pretty good, like, you could snipe with this thing, you know what I mean, and it hits hard, but as you can see, it, it's loud, very loud. But they're loud, but they're very accurate, and like I said, like, that's good distance right there. And it shoots 44 Magnum. Okay, I got an offer for you. Do you want to meet up? Yeah, that's not me there. That is a good distance. That's max. That's... So that's pretty pinpoint. That's my last shot. And on this difficulty, like I said, you could probably get away with using it. Um, but I wouldn't get in the habit of using them because, yeah, when you get in the higher difficulties, unless you just want to attract everything under the sun consistently, uh, I, I wouldn't mess around with any revolvers personally. The only time you'll catch me using a revolver is if I'm trying to do a bounty or something like that that requires it. Um, but hey, if it's the only gun you got, uh, I would use it in an emergency situation. Like, you know, if I got jumped by a feral or something, there is, there is situations in the game where I will shoot an unsuppressed firearm, but, uh, it has to be like a, a life or death emergency. Cause like I said, generally, uh, shooting an unsuppressed gun will create more problems than it's going to solve.
three stars still max fighting. Hello out there. I have some goodies to trade straight from Trumbull Valley. Come on by. Lots of traders and stuff showing up right now, but uh as I showed you guys previously, in this difficulty, right now we really don't need traders. We have so much loot, and I haven't even looted all the play cards on the map. It's uh that it it that's my one downside, or like my one gripe against the lower difficulties. It's just there's so much loot that you get to the point where you don't even know what to do with, with it half the time. I've even had some of you guys, when I brought this up in previous episodes, uh, some of you guys have also commented that, you know, you had, you had to up the difficulty for the map because it just it was too much loot. Um, and it does kind of, it kind of waters down most of the systems in the game. Uh, the just sheer amount of loot, you know, you never have to really craft anything. You never have to really trade for anything or just because it's just you're just drowning in it. Got an outpost here. We'll drop here. some beef between them uh, but as you guys can see like, like I'm gonna show you here you look at my resource numbers we're good we, we, we have all the loot um, then you go you check the map you know areas like this I haven't hit a single building here uh, all just exploding with resources this whole countryside exploding with resources you get big towns like this haven't even touched um, Big towns over here haven't even touched. I, I couldn't even imagine what your supply locker would look like if you tried to loot one of these maps completely. It would be insane. It, it'd be absolutely insane. You'd definitely be able to move up to higher difficulties and have and not have to worry about much except the, the increased zombie threat. Uh, that's another thing I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about. I, I think I might have spoke on it a little bit in the past, but um, what people tend to do in State of Decay is they'll play with a community, they'll max it out, they'll get all their guns, all their stuff, and then they'll try to take that same community and move it into a higher difficulty. Now, you can obviously do that. Uh, a lot of people do, but what ends up happening is every single difficulty, and I think I've explained this already, so if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry, skip over this, um, but every single difficulty, the best way I can explain it is starts off at one. Like there's green zone difficulty one out of 10, let's just say. Every difficulty, you know, green zone one through 10, standard zone one through 10. Um, every difficulty starts off at one. So for instance, standard zone right now, where we have killed all the play cards, we have a ton of heroes, we're at the end game. We will call this standard zone 10. All right, this is as hard as standard zone will get. Now, when you when you leave, when you start a new game, say I, I'm okay, I'm comfortable with standard zone, I wanna move into dread zone. Uh, what's gonna end up happening is, generally if you go and you start a brand new community, you're gonna start off, you're gonna go from standard zone 10 to dread zone one, okay? Hopefully I'm explaining this in a way that everybody will understand. I'm trying to keep it Barney status, or, but Barney style. Um, so you go from standard zone 10 to dark, uh, dread zone one. But what happens is when you move a community into a difficulty, you maintain that community standing. 
all right, all of your unlocks, all of your heroes. So your people are already leveled up. You have a whole bunch of standing. Um, and what happens is, is instead of going from standard 10 to dread one, you go from standard 10 to dread 10. Or standard 10 or dread 10 to nightmare 10 to lethal 10. You're jumping straight into the end state of the difficulty because when you start a brand new fresh community, you'll always start off on one and then the difficulty will ramp up within itself. It ramps up from one to 10 throughout your playthrough. But yeah, when you move a community straight into the difficulty, you're going to go right to the hardest that that difficulty can be. And that's why you'll see a lot of guys who move straight into lethal zone with a new community from like dread or something. And then they get a community wipe and they're like, what the hell? It's so hard. It's like, yeah, cause you're jumping straight into triple feral packs, the nastiest hordes, zombies everywhere. You're jumping into the hardest of le that lethal zone has to offer. So that's why I try to tell people, if you're going to go into a new difficulty, start fresh because you, then you get to grow and adjust with the difficulty. Now, granted, you're not going to have all your stuff with you, which can kind of suck. But at the same time, you're also not going to have to just battle all of the zombies right off the bat. So hopefully I explained that well enough. Like I said, I don't really care about the traders. Um, still nothing on our leader right now. I'll be right there. Go down and do this mission for this group. See you soon. Now this survivor is potentially going to get tired. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some coffee. Or an espresso. An shot of espresso is actually the better of the two. Uh, so now if she gets tired, we'll be able to just pop that and some fuel in the trunk and uh, she'll be able to continue not gonna lie I was confused on what that noise was um, plague screamers which are the blood plague variant of a screamer that's a normal screamer. I actually have there it is. We need to make sure we know who our friends are. All I had to do was set my goal somewhere else and then the mission would pop up. I hope these are useful. All I had to do was set my goal somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, those screamers sound completely different than the plague screamers. And when I heard it, I was like, what is that noise? But yeah. And plague screamers can actually hurt you, but that's something that you'll learn about in the higher difficulties. Um, I don't think you see plague screamers until Nightmare Zone. Switch over to the leader, and this will start her personal dead zone. Mm -hmm. All right, so visit uh, your neighbors to learn who has joined forces with the co coalition against us. So we're going to go and see who's on our side and who's not. Uh, now, all of these missions will have a little bit of fighting, so be ready. Uh, I'm going to be a little more prepared this time. This I'm going to bring some first aid have. kits. First aid kits are really, really good when you're fighting humans. And I'll actually bring the better first aid. Better stamina. Let's do this. Now, this is four different um, enclaves you got to go visit. I don't remember how many of them are actually not with you. So we're going to we're gonna have to see. We're going to find out right now. But pull up to every enclave ready to fight.
I'm not gonna lie, the smash wagons actually half decent on fuel. You've got a bad history, but I'm ready to start fresh. How about you? Move on. And count your blessings. Seriously? I just can't agree with that. Don't you understand the word truce? Okay. But well, they're instantly hostile. Now you can actually get angles on them from these back windows instead of opening the doors here. So I prefer my fights a little easier than that one. Mm. No more Z's in here. Mm. I'd like to take all the guns. All right, so that's one down. Uh, the other three are all completely on the other side of the map. I'm gonna fuel up. We're heading out. This road here is a quite congested. We actually haven't spent much time in this area. This area is a little congested, so be careful driving through it. But see, that's the another you know part of the downside I was talking about earlier about the loot being so plentiful in the lower difficulties, is it gives you less incentive to like go explore the map because you don't need to you already have everything and the main reason to go explore the map is to find more loot um so yeah it's it's a little bit of a you know you're not going to explore as much i mean maybe you will earlier on but I, I don't know i personally as you can see haven't really done much exploration uh just because we haven't needed to but maybe out of curiosity, like if you're newer at the game, you're like, oh, I wonder what's down here, and you just kind of will go there to go. But in the higher difficulties, you're going to be going there because you have no choice. <laughs> um, there's nothing anywhere else, and you're gonna you need to you need to loot. So guys seem chill now don't just because they're not shooting at you immediately when you come out and talk to them all right you look like you have something on your mind it's simple really we're here to loot your core oh shit so we're gonna hit this and then immediately back out so, we're getting out of this town 
You okay. clearly don't want us around. So they didn't try to fight us. Mm -hmm. Another group here. So right now we're 0 for 2, guys. Nobody's on our side. Oh, yeah, that's right. 0 for 2. Alright, so I'm glad I hit this rock there because if not, I would have whipped through there. And potentially smacked into that freaking bloater. Make sure you go real wide, because if you even if you try to drive past those bloaters and you're even remotely too close, it'll still explode. So make sure you give them a good like seven, eight feet at a minimum. already got to him. Here? So these guys <laughs> were probably uh, no, oh so the zombies did our job for us i didn't know if these guys were on our side and the coalition killed them but now the, the zombies quote unquote did our job for us okay one more group now this is actually an enclave i have a mission for so <laughs> hopefully they're on our side Not insta hostels. Hello? Anyone there? Looks like no one's home. We better find out why. I guess I just put me on the menu. Whoops. This is the uh there it is. Is your town big, uh, being run by a tyrant or the coalition? We're here to help. Join us to put end to tyranny. Well, we sure did blow those folks off, didn't we? Now we know where everybody stands. If the coalition tries anything again, we'll be ready. Stuck. Like Chuck, right? Well, that was that was not very promising, guys. Nobody nobody was on our side. They all abandoned us. I believe there's only one more mission after this where you actually go after the leaders of the coalition.
Yeah, Trouble Valley or um, Providence Ridge is. I always tell people it's one of the easier maps to play, especially as a new player, just the way the map's laid out. Um, now on Lethal Zone, though, it is. I wouldn't say it's like a harder map, but the play cart uh, density, because there's about 30 play cards. Um, you're going to have like five or six plus play cards on top of each other um, every time. So that's the one downside to Providence Ridge on the higher end is, uh, yeah, play card density is just like this town down on the south here. We'll have like six, seven play cards in it easy. So we don't need to go all the way back to base to swap off of her. We can do that right at an outpost. I'll give the time for the missions to come and go out and do other things with another survivor. Time for Nikki to upgrade from her military clothing to, uh... Well, you know, we'll keep her in that. She's cool. She's cool. Um... Get these all out. So many junk guns now if i had a red talon um workshop which this is getting a little bit into advanced stuff it's a specialty workshop that actually repairs all of the guns in your locker passively if i had one of those we'd be in a good spot but as of right now i would have to manually repair all of these weapons and that's very expensive very very expensive That. Hey everyone, the coalition is making their move. Oh, there it is. The uh, warlord final, smash the coalition. Here we go, guys. Mm -hmm. So we got all our stuff on us still. I'm gonna grab a little bit of extra ammo, just in case. We have any? Oh no, okay, we're good. Got some of my inventory. Uh, I actually think I might swap off 9mm for this and run something like a 7.62 or a 5. Yeah, just because we have more uh, bullets. Grab this custom AK. Throw a suppressor on it. Stock up on our 7.62. Okay, so uh, for this, I actually have to go and uh, talk to the informant at the base. She'll tell us what she learned, and then it's, it's go time. But as you can see, uh, the missions come. You don't have to sit here and wait for the missions. Like, there's plenty of stuff that you can do in between. You don't have to back-to-back -back the missions either, you know what I mean? You can just do them as they come in. Take your time. Uh, if you need, you know, to recover, if, it, if you're not clearing the missions out as easy or as fast as an efficient, um, you, like I said, you could take time, go out, loot, rearm, and, uh, and then go it's after them.
Now, the thing about this mission is when you finish it, it finishes the game and any in the vehicle you're driving can dis disappear, especially if you don't uh, if you're going to roll over into a new map or whatever. Um, it's only going to teleport the vehicles that are in parking spots. Any vehicle that's not in a parking spot, you will lose. Uh, so that's why I'm going to leave these vehicles here easy to bring down. And we'll drive something else over there. We've had work days, that's for sure. Okay, so it's telling you legacy completion is permanent. Uh, completing the leader legacy unlocks a powerful boon you can use when starting a new community. After the mission is complete, you'll be able to access the legacy survivor screen. On that screen, you can choose to continue the current community or disband it. Choosing to continue brings your supply locker, resource storage, and parked vehicles with you to your next adventure. Um, so that's why you have to make sure that vehicles you hey, want... Sexy. If you are gonna are gonna move on, are in parking slots, and don't drive a vehicle that you want to bring with you into your next map. If you want to roll this community into another map, don't drive that one over there. Le leave those all in parking spots, and then uh, yeah. So we're gonna click this. Speak to her. You better gear up before starting this. Could get messy. So we're gonna travel to the coalition base. Now, I believe this side, this part's actually easier, in my, opinion, in my opinion, than the other part. Like, you had to fight, like, four enclaves or three enclaves before. This is, I believe, just one. Okay, so we're going to grab... So, you know what? I think I might... No, nah, I don't. I don't matter. Now, I don't know if this is an enclave or the leaders. I, I, like I said, it's been a while since I've done this, so we're going to kind of be figuring it out here. I think you might kill a enclave and then... Then, uh... You go after the leaders afterwards. There's three of them. Maybe if I take out two, I can get the last one to talk. Little shed. Make sure we park on a, in a spot where they can't get us right away. Leave the doors on the other side here. Now, because they're in a little shed, if you if I wanted to, I could just gas this whole building out. I'll show you guys here right now. We got that bloater gas. Um, Stuff is phenomenal now. I think I might be able to get it to creep up under the uh Alright, so you, uh, you want to know where the coalition is, right? Their HQ is at the concession stand. That's all I know. I wish we had a better solution. No fucking way! How'd you think this was gonna go, bro? This...
Now, this building's actually quite open, too. Um, you can go ahead and uh, throw a bloater gas grenade in there. Now, this is a little more dangerous in the higher difficulties. Like I said, you can't just one-tap the human enemies like you can here. Um, they're very, very dangerous, very deadly, very accurate with their shooting. So you definitely got to be careful. Coalition leaders are in that building. This is our time. We will take them here and now. Move! Okay. I had enough of you. No more of that. is dead. Yes. No one can stand against us. Finally, we can bring peace to this town. And that's it, guys. Then the mission ends. Just take a moment and think about all we've done together. But we've also built something here that can endure. And anything that can be done once can be done again in the next town. And that's how we do it. That's how we rebuild this world together. Together, guys. All right, and there it is. So um, I, obviously I've already earned it, but like I said, you earn the boon for the difficulty you beat it on and I, the green zone is below us. So we got both. Um, now, this is what I, in the beginning of the episode, what I was talking about, how it can get con confusing. Either A, you have two choices. You can continue this community, which all the vehicles and everything that we had um, will roll over, the, everything in our supply locker, all of our resources, all that stuff will roll over you'll be able to continue playing and you get to pick a new map um, or you can go back to the same map. However, 
you, however you want to do it. Or you can disband the community. And uh, you see all these survivors here. These are all the survivors I beat in the game with previously and have stored in my legacy pool. So this is a pool of survivors. So say you had, you know, multiple different playthroughs, you can actually start picking these survivors and pulling them into other playthroughs and play with some of your best survivors all at once. Um, but yeah, this is where you store them all. Um, there's actually a radio, radio command that allows you to recruit these guys into your active community you're playing on. You bring up your radio, they'll say legacy, uh, I think, uh, yeah, legacy survivors or something like that. You click on that and they cost, they, you got to spend money or influence to recruit them. They're like 1200 a piece, but you can uh, build a super team of all your best survivors if you um, so either A, I can keep all these people here. Um, say I didn't want her to be in. Say I wanted to still continue the playthrough, but I didn't want some of these people. Um, you can put some of them here or you can just get rid of them outright. Uh, but let's just say, you know, I'm like, oh, you know what? Um, um, I guess she would probably. Well, that's yeah this is our her, her her okay um so say we didn't want her anymore we could either a send her to the pool or b we can just get rid of her outright so you're not know, like ah you know i don't really want her in my pool she's not really all that good and i don't uh, so i'm just gonna get rid of her out uh, so you hold x eliminate and then she will disappear um, or if I put her in the pool, she would she would go here and you know you gotta do it there. But now, like I said, if you the only reason you would disband the community is if you want to start a brand new one uh, and use the legacy. But if you don't care and you want to keep this community, you can just hit continue community. Um, it'll say move to a new map. You say continue. Uh, you get to pick your you get to pick your difficulty so if you're if you still want to uh play now the reason for this is uh i just beat warlord now say you don't want to start from scratch and you want to unlock all the boons this is the fastest way to unlock all the boons with the same community with the same gear the same cars everything i could click standard again go and now that i did i did warlord last time i could do builder this time boom get builder then you do the same thing you get to the end of the game uh, now I can go do trader, you know, and you can just do all four legacies with the same community. You used to not be able to do that. That's actually a relatively new feature. Um, but then say you're like, you know what? Standards too easy for me. I think I'm ready to go up to, uh, you know, nightmare zone or, or, or lethal zone, or, you know what? Maybe I'm only ready for dread. You could, you could choose at this point, but another thing you could do is custom settings. You could say, all right, you know what? um the zombies were okay you know they were they were they were they were kind of hard so maybe i'll just go dread because i'm still not comfortable with the zombies yet uh the community difficulty uh you know this counts as like uh, how much your people ate uh how morale was affecting you how much the cost of things were say you're like oh you know what um the cost of everything was pretty decent uh, you know, I, I think I'm ready to up it a little bit. Uh, you can go dread. And then when it comes to map difficulty, you could say, hmm, you know what? There was a lot of loot on that map, like a lot of loot. Uh, you know what? I think I'm ready to step it up to like nightmare or lethal. Now, these are the two where you're going to start seeing a lot of pre-looted locations. Lethal is quite extreme and you're going to get 28 to 30 play cards. Nightmare zone is decent. Uh, 17 to 18 play cards and... Um, a lot of the buildings are still going to be looted. So, like, say you're like, all right, I want less loot. This isn't going to make the game harder, guys. This is only going to make the, well, it's not going to make the zombies harder. That's controlled by up here. This is just going to make less loot. So, all right, you know, I'm comfortable with this. Let, let's, let's roll with this. And then, you know, you just played on Providence Ridge. So, now at this point, you get to choose what map you want to move. Hold on one sec. So, um, you know, you just played on that map, so you can go ahead and decide what map you want to move to uh, going forward. Uh, I, I would advise you guys to try a new map, you know what I mean? Providence Ridge is, is cool and all, but there's five maps. Trumbull Valley is a more advanced map. It has story and stuff tied to it. Before you play Trumbull Valley's map, 
I would advise you to play Heartland, um, which I'll show you what that is here in a second. All right, so I guess we'll go Cascade. We'll click Cascade Hill. Hold on. Um, yeah, I think I'll go Cascade, but now the cool thing, guys, is, uh, before when you were playing with a, uh, with a community and you wanted to move maps, you had to, you always had to start in the starter base. There was no choice. Um, you always would start in a starter base, but with this new system, you can just pick what map or what, what base you want to move into as long as you can afford it. I can't afford container for it because I don't have enough people. But uh, if I didn't kick that lady out at the end there, I would be able to. I would have been able to get the biggest base on the map right off the bat. Um, but you get to choose what ma what base you want to go into. So say you're like, oh, you know what? I don't want to start in that super tiny base. Maybe we'll start off, you know, in something medium size, like one of the mid tier bases. Uh, so go ahead, hit Church on a Hill, and now you actually get to start in a mid tier base right off the bat, and you don't have to go through that little, you know, the base progression. And uh, you can just kind of jump right into looting, killing play cards, and stuff like that. How about we build a shooting range? Better to learn in here than out there. Um, and now, as you guys can see, there's juggernauts, ferals already spawning because, like I said, we went from standard 10 to dread 10. Um, so you do got to be careful with that. Like I said, the difficulty... Um, it's, it, it, it's just going to ramp up. You're going to have max Look difficulty out, right off the bat. Right. But I wanted to show you guys, now that we have that nightmare map, I, I can't see it right now because of uh, all the hidden buildings. But there is going to be less, a lot less loot on the map compared to a standard zone map. And if you come look here, you got your cars that were parked in the spots. I don't know how why we got this, because that was not parked in a spot. Okay. Um, but there it is, guys. And then you, you continue playing. You know what I mean? And then it's just the same thing. Rinse and repeat. Uh, you're going to go. You're going to kill the play cards. You're going to end. You're going to choose a leader and um, and go with it. So uh, I hope this guide helps you out, guys. Um, it, was, it was definitely a good time, you know, explaining the new systems and how everything's worked. I showed you guys right there. Uh, we didn't get any base sieges this whole playthrough. We didn't get any... Um, infestations that whole playthrough because of how i was playing how i was approaching my play cards how i was acting in plague territory um yours might be a little different you might be like whoa you know i got all these little orange icons these infestation icons this was a playthrough to teach you how to avoid all of that um obviously you might make mistakes and you're gonna have those things pop up but uh this is just a guide to kind of show you if you do everything right you can completely avoid infestation sieges and all that stuff so again thank you so much i hope you guys enjoyed this series i really do appreciate you guys sticking with it and uh you know watching to the end i'm glad i was able to help some of you guys out uh, if you haven't on your way out a hey, smash that like button if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing and uh other than that i'll see you guys in the next peace